Hi everyone. So uh, this is the first part of a two-part lecture on Housing Development Control and Licensing Act, uh, 1966. Okay, so this is the full name of HDA. Okay, you see in the bracket, Control and Licensing. We have covered the um, licensing part, uh, most of the licensing part um, we, uh, in our BIE 2001 course last semester, I think under Dr. Wan. Yeah? So we are not going to touch again uh, on the licensing or what HDA is all about. So for this um, week, we are going to jump straight into the topic of vacant possession uh, as um, contained uh, inside the Housing Development Control and Licensing Act 1966. But as a refresher, I would like to show you uh, the housing development uh, process in Malaysia, okay, which uh, essentially, everybody knows you must start with the land, right? So the land is no uh, so the the, the uh, preparation of the site uh, or the, the identification of the site is known as site uh, uh, is known as land assembly, uh, whereby you identify a suitable um, site, uh, whether it's a parcel or a number of uh, land parcels. Uh, you assemble the site, uh, uh, then you go and appoint. Uh, um, appoint the consultants, uh, appoint or liaise with the consultant, liaise with the consultants. Uh, then you do the necessary applications, and we learned before uh, in our um, in our in the earlier part of this course uh, during our lecture on uh, SDBA, okay, uh, that the application for uh, building plan uh, approval you we go to OSC, correct? Uh, this is together with other applications such as the planning commission. Okay, so you can see there application for the proposed development. Okay, uh, is done via the one-stop center. Okay, and within the one-stop center, okay, the uh, the approval will be given by the different different departments. Uh, some examples of the departments that you can see here: the land office for the land matters, the local authorities planning department for the planning permission or development order. And then the building department for the building plan approval, engineering department for all the mechanicals or the apa nama tu, uh, electrical punya plans uh, on the uh, in the buildings, okay. And then the technical departments for all other uh, approvals such as the DID, yeah, such as the what else, the storage uh, department, uh, all the technical departments, okay. And then finally, results will be out okay, on the on the application, whether approve or to reject or to approve with conditions. You can see here, okay, all the approvals, uh, approval uh, process. Okay, we have learned this before. I'm not going to elaborate. But after that, you can see here this one, the construction stage. Uh, uh, constru sorry, uh, construction stage. Okay. Um, which is um, stated that there is a, um, what we call a statutory statutory period uh, for the uh, for the units for the residential units to be completed. I'm not talking about the residential development in Malaysia. Okay, not for other types of developments because we are now learning the Housing Development Act. Right now, for the construction, okay, there's a fixed time period. Okay, uh, for landed properties. That's 24 months uh, uh, after the signing of the sale of purchase agreement, and also for the uh, strata uh, residential uh, residential properties, 36 months. Uh, this is the point okay, during the construction stage. Is the point when for the uh, strata properties you apply for um, strata title application uh, application for subdivided building. Okay, we have learned this at what stage? We have learned before, this is done at the superstructure stage, uh, when the superstructure stage has been certified uh, by the, uh, by the apa nama tu? Um, PSP. And then we have, uh, upon completion, issuance of certificate of completion and compliance. Okay, The steps of which we have learned before, uh, earlier on in this course, uh, we have the 21 forms. Uh, Remember from G1, G2, G3 until G21, and then immediately after that, what comes out? Form F, kan? Form F, which is the, uh, the architect certification that the building has been completed in accordance with the laws and according with the approved um, building plans, kan? So, and after that, what happens is what we are going to learn tonight. Uh, uh, we are going to learn. Huh? 
um, the delivery of vacant possession of the completed building. And you can see the order here, the CCC must be um, must be issued first before the building can be delivered. Huh? Delivered by the vendor to the purchaser. The vendor refers to the, 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 the um, developer. Okay, the purchaser is the home buyer in this case. So strictly, is uh, this um, process or this um, diagram refers to the housing development uh, process in Malaysia. Okay, and we can see there in the bracket it shows that which is what we I'm going to elaborate in this lecture the defect liability period. Okay, defect liability period, which used to be once upon a time it used to be twelve months, then it was extended to 18 months now finally uh, the latest defect liability period is within 24 months of the deliver or the date of the delivery of vacant possession now vacant possession we are going to learn in detail in this lecture the last stage uh, of the housing development process uh, this is the process when the finished product product uh, is be um, is transferred or is um open is given uh, to the uh, cons a consumer or the purchaser uh, the final stage now at the end of this lecture you'll be able to explain the definition of vacant possession so in this case uh, i have shortened vacant possession to vp the control over vp the control here means um, which parts of the uh, housing development act uh, controls the vacant possession process uh, process the um, the manner uh, cara, the manner of which vacant possession is delivered uh, what happens is if, uh, if vacant possession is not delivered on time uh, so we call that the control lah, uh, the control the, the provisions in the hda that controls uh, vacant possession delivery then uh, uh, then the timing of vacant possession delivery when when does vacant possession when is vacant possession um, must be when does the vacant possession must be delivered uh, to the uh, house buyer or the, to the home buyer uh, what's the timeline like what's the time period like so you want to know that when we talk about time we are talking about the statutory time uh, what's contained in the statutory documents uh, dalam akta lah uh, ataupun dalam um, apa nama tu in um, in legal apa nama tu uh, not documents in the um, regulations or in the in this case schedules uh, schedules related to housing development act what's the timing uh, um, yang diletakkan yang ditentukan dalam the schedules so dalam jadual-jadual uh, um, related to uh, housing development act and finally, the manner, cara, uh, the manner of vacuum delivery. That, that um, there are conditions that must be fulfilled. There are documents that also must be issued uh, during the delivery of the vacuum possession. So we want to know that. So first of all, the definition, definition of vacuum possession. What is it? So in BM, it's known as milikan poso. So um the way that we say how we give it to the purchaser then we give it to the purchaser we say it's delivered uh diserahkan serah milikan kosong we don't call it pemilikan pemilikan is ownership proprietorship huh? so possession is milikan okay milikan so vacant possession milikan kosong bila kita nak beri when we want to give the milikan kos, uh, kosong the, the the vacant possession to the purchaser we call we deliver and we call it delivery uh, delivery of vacant possession to the purchaser. Um, delivery, like that, to the uh, receipt lah, the receipt of vacant possession. Huh? Acceptance pun boleh juga uh, of vacant possession from the vendor. Uh, tapi normally we use this word lah, delivery of vacant possession huh? uh, from the vendor slash developer to the purchaser slash buyer. Generally, uh, generally, this is the process of property handover. Uh, kita panggil juga serah kunci. Uh, when we uh, give the key to the homeowner, uh, to the home buyer, for the home buyer to enjoy the exclusive use uh, of the property. Vacant uh, possession is a legal concept uh, referring to the right of a purchaser to exclusive use of a property. 
either on completion of the sale where any previous occupant has moved out or, in, or on completion of a new property. Uh, so it's a legal concept. So when you become possession, it's not a document. Uh, it's a legal concept. Satu concept, uh, satu bentuk abstract lah. Yang mana melibatkan, referring to the right of a purchaser to exclusive use of a property. Uh, yang mana melibatkan uh, hak hak seseorang pemilik untuk menikmati ya, secara eksklusif menikmati uh, dia, dia boleh exclude other people ha? so exclusive use for himself ha? of the property bila on the completion of the sale ha? ini untuk uh, sub sale lah untuk bangunan sedia ada for an existing residential unit okay it's new it's on the completion of the sale okay when the previous occupant has moved out ha? bila orang yang tinggal tu telah Uh, pergi sebab bangunan dah siap pada existing okay so vacant possession is given when the house is empty lah uh, but uh, when we are talking about um, uh, another scenario uh, uh, in a new development we are talking about the completion of a new property uh, so dah ada dua lah dua, two situations there where, where vacant possession may be delivered but strictly for This particular um, lecture, we are talking about delivery of vacant possession for a new development. Satu, uh, apa, um, satu pembangunan yang baru. Okay. Now the control. Uh, now we are talking about the um, the, 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 the provisions uh, under HTA, uh, uh, which re, uh, which are related to uh, vacant possession. So details of the delivery of vacant possession are contained in Schedule G and Schedule H. Okay, um, You may remember that Schedule G and Schedule H are the standard sale and purchase agreements uh, that are contained at the back of the Housing Development Act. Okay, so Schedule G is the SPA, Sale and Purchase Agreement for Land and Building, for landed residential properties. Schedule H is the SPA for subdivided building for strata residents. Uh, so G and H comes up together kan? G dulu baru H. So G refers to SMP or SPA, SMP Chase Agreement for landed properties. Schedule H is the um, is the SMP Chase Agreement SPA for subdivided building or strata properties. Okay. Now I will show you. Uh, we I will um, get out of this window just to show you. Okay. Uh, schedule G and Schedule H, uh, sorry, Schedule G and Schedule H, where um, where uh, both of which I have uploaded on Spectrum. You can have a look. So this this is G, G, okay, G for see here, sale and purchase agreement, land and building, landed property. So I should uh, switch the the order lah. G first, okay, G, sale and purchase agreement, land and building, H. Sale and purchase agreement, building intended for subdivision. Uh, subdivided building equals the strata um, residence lah, strata properties, strata um, residence. Okay, so now the first part is all about the um, ident identifying the parties to the agreement. This is like a contract. Sale and purchase agreement, agreement equals contract, right? So the first page identifies the vendor and the purchaser. Uh, the vendor tu siapa? The normally the uh, developer lah. Uh. So between the vendor and the purchaser, the name. Uh, maybe if the if it's the company, the name of the company. NRIC kalau ada IC ya. Uh, if uh, there's a, a identity identity card, the national IC. But if it's a company, then the company registration number lah. Uh, the company number. Okay, then the purchaser IC number here in after known as uh, da, 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 da. okay. So who are the parties to the um, agreement to the SPA uh, to the say purchase, say purchase agreement? Okay, whereby the parties of this property, uh, the parties yang tengah sign uh, who are signing the um, uh, an agreement of the sale and purchase of this identified property uh, dia akan nyatakan what what are the uh, what's the lot number the title number the mukim uh, the state where uh, how how big uh, the land area okay some identification of the property uh, of the property and then if there's any um, charge on the land charge to who with its register office di mana okay 
uh, the charge okay so those are all the initial the, the the identity of the one the the vendor the purchaser two the identity of the um, of the the, the the property itself three the identity of interested parties the charge and so on okay then only we go to one two three so in the schedule we don't call it section so in the schedule this one schedule g we call this number one two class class one schedule g class two schedule g class three and so forth uh, sometimes you call it sub sub class sub sub class two one sub class two two sub class two three uh, so it's class uh, the clausa 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 di dalam jadual dia bukan section ha dia bukan artikel juga artikel dalam perlembagaan kan okey now uh, so first one two three is not what we want to uh, now sorry there is something uh, here uh, regarding uh, vacant possession so in the lecture we might we will touch a little bit here ah uh, berkenaan dengan the property must be free from encumbrances before the purchaser takes vacant possession of the said building so adalah and there is a mention that the property must be free from encumbrances before the vacant possession is delivered uh, to the purchaser or the purchaser takes vacant possession okay so then we go to the purchase price is how much this is very important okay as you will see later on in our lecture uh, the importance of this purchase price is when uh, uh, situation uh, 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 delay uh, when a uh, delay uh, in the delivery of the compensation occurs uh, the ganti rugi tu the award uh, the compensation on the um, on the um, on the late delivery or kita panggil uh, damages uh, the compensation tu is general kan is a general term but in this case it's known as damage LAD, uh, liquidator and ascertain damages. LAD, uh, it will, will be based on this one, the purchase price. So, so the purchase price must be stated uh, clearly. Then the schedule of payments, schedule of payments as per the third schedule. Uh, for those who are not familiar, I will spend some time on this one. Okay. So third schedule, if you go at the end of the jadual of the of the schedule g and schedule h you will find the third schedule okay so the third schedule is schedule of payment so if you buy a house which is under construction the bank has to release according to the percentage of completion so you can see here immediately upon the signing of this agreement 10% so that is the, the deposit that we are talking about 10% deposit kan so this is the 10% to be paid uh, immediately upon the signing of this agreement, 10% deposit. And then if you can see one by one, uh, the items, the foundation completed, then you have to pay 10% more. The enforced concrete framework completed, then uh, the bank has to release 15% uh, of the purchase price to the developer and so on. Uh, you will see one by one, the enforced concrete framework completed, the walls have been completed and the of a uh, door and window frames placed in position 10 more percent the roofing electrical wiring plumbing gas piping and all the apa nama pipes and cables ah huh, or the trunking have been um, completed 10 more percent to be released okay internal and external plastering 10 percent so rich works 5 percent drains 5 percent road serving the building 5 percent okay then on the date huh, of the purchaser takes vacant possession so on the delivery of vacant possession date uh, the date of vacant position possession 12.5 percent okay 12.5 percent and then within 21 days of uh, after receipt uh, purchaser of the purchaser solicitor of separate document of title uh, when the title plus the uh, of the separate title of the state lot with valid and registrable, registrable memorandum or transfer executed okay then 2.5%, whichever is later, 2.5 more percent on the date of purchaser takes vacant possession. Okay, uh, 5 more percent. But this one uh, will be um, simpan, will be hold on, uh, will be held on by the solicitor. Uh, ini tak boleh bagi. The 5% will not be released. Uh, dia akan disimpan sebagai stake money. 
uh, stakeholder okay which is the vendor solicitor solicitor uh, peguam of the developer akan pegang the final 5% so after the 95% has been uh, has been released by the bank eh, by stages of completion the 5% will be retained by the vendor solicitor eh, peguam uh, developer tu dan dipegang untuk tujuan ini for the for the uh, for this particular period the, the first six months uh, 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 the first six months after the first six months dah the habis of the vacant possession then release 2.5 percent after the take possession 18 months release again 2.5 percent the reason for this retention money uh, dipegang ni by the stakeholder is to allow for any uh, apa no, any claims on defect uh, ni defect liability period ni ha uh, ni 18% 18 months ni ke sekarang dah 24 this must be an old this must be an old agreement because this is supposed to be 28 uh, sorry 24 24 months uh, pada akhir defect liability period which is 24 months after the vacant possession delivery then the whole 100% will be released to the uh, developer uh, then the reason why the money is being held uh, uh, held back is because sekiranya ada claims if there's any claim uh, by the home buyer uh, by the purchaser uh, on the building any defect and then we, we will learn about this uh, in the lecture any defect uh, on the um, on the um, on the uh, on the new uh, sorry on the property uh, the claim daripada developer untuk repair developer doesn't repair then the um, the the purchaser can out of pocket uh, can repair himself and then deduct on this five percent so again if you see at uh, the order of the uh, stages uh, it is really the stages of completion of the building it starts from the foundation then the concrete framework, then the walls one by one, right? Uh, bila wall dah siap, the roof. Bila roof dah siap, then the plastering. When the plastering has been completed, then the sewage. Then after after the sewage works has uh, has been completed, then the drains, and then the, the roads, and then finally vacant possession. Okay. Now all these, the, the, the final, uh, the items three, four, five, ni semua, um, what do you call it? Uh, legal, legal matters lah on the, uh, on the property okay so basically this is third schedule the third schedule uh, we i will refer back to the third schedule in our lecture uh, after this other juga so i just want you to be aware that third schedule in the schedule g and schedule h similarly we are not talking about g right h pun has got its own uh, third schedule same thing sama juga if i show you at the bottom okay schedule uh the third schedule sorry yeah third schedule third schedule same uh third schedule right same immediately upon signing 10 percent okay then uh foundation 10 percent same 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 okay with the um shadow g so the difference between g and h is g is for landed property or uh, landed residential property h is for um strata residential property okay so just to show you again how many um, now the uh, comparing these two okay schedule h has small clauses than schedule g so schedule g ends at clause number 20 28 29 30 32 okay it ends at number 32 clause 32 but if you can see okay h ends at clause number Eh, some, no, uh, more, more. Clause number 35, 36. Uh, clause number 36. So it has uh, four more clauses uh, than the schedule G. Okay. So these are the main differences between the two schedule, schedule G and schedule H. But the, dip, the, the similarity, the main similarity is both are the sale and purchase agreements for residential properties. Uh, okay. Now we go back to our... And our lecture, okay, our lecture just now, control the composition. 
So I've shown you just now, okay, schedule G and schedule H, whereby schedule G is the SPA for land and building, huh, for landed, build, uh, landed uh, residential property. Schedule H is the SPA for subdivided building or strata residential properties. Now, clause two, remember it's called clause, huh? not article, not section, clause. Clause two, as, as per what I showed you just now, it says property must be free from encumbrances before the purchaser takes possession of the building slash parcel. So building refers to the landed building, uh, landed property, parcel refers to the strata. Lah. Then clause 23 of schedule G and clause 26 of schedule H. Uh, per day, what is it? It's the timing. The timing, the time of the delivery of vacant possession. For landed properties, for land with building, it's 24 months. Uh, uh, from the date of the S, uh, SPA, but for the subdivided building, uh, the delivery of vacant possession should be made within 36 months uh, of the date of the sale and purchase agreement, SMP or SPA. Lah. We call it either SMP, sale and purchase, or SPA, sale and purchase agreement. Okay, so again. Uh, for landed is 24 months from the date of signing though. Uh, when I when I when we say the date of say a purchase agreement is the date of signature the, when you sign bila disahkan once the stamping uh, that is the date of say a purchase agreement now for landed 24 months from the date of signing of SPA for strata 36 months so for its for instance uh, uh, the SPA date uh, for landed for a landed property is one uh, first July 2016. So you calculate 24 months is two years, right? 2016 plus 2, 2018. But notice the date. See the date. If you sign on 1st of July, okay, the last date uh, when the property must be delivered on, on that day itself, uh, the tier 2 is on the day itself, the tier. The, the delivery must be done on or before 30th of June 2018. It's not 1st of July, bukan. it's the day before. That's the end of the 24 months. For strata, okay, if you sign on 1st of July 2016, 36 months, you plus 3 years, so 2016 becomes 2019. Again, the month or the date, the date okay, is one day earlier. Huh? Then the date you sign. Okay, so the statutory date. This one, the statutory, also known as statutory date of vacant possession delivery. Huh? Sebab mengikut statute, mengikut undang-undang. Ada -undang. yang mengikut undang-undang untuk di uh, diberi, uh, di, diserah milik kosong tu is 30, uh, 30th of uh, June 2016. Huh? The statutory date of vacant possession delivery is also known as completion date. Uh, so if you see any reference to completion date, uh, bila dia cakap pasal vacant possession, we are not talking about the date of the completion of the building, bukan? We are talking about the concept too, uh, the completion the, the completion of the time. Uh, completion of the time whereby vacant possession must be delivered, which is 24 months for landed uh, properties or landed residents, uh, 36 months for uh, strata properties or strata residence. Next, uh, the timing. Again, we go back to clause 23 for schedule G, clause 26 for schedule H. Time is of the essence. Sangat penting. Uh, when, we, when we talk about essence, dia sangat uh, penting. Dia, uh, dia, dia merupakan uh, sesuatu yang beri tona, lah, yang memberi uh, makna kepada kontrak tersebut. So, time is of the essence of the for the delivery of vacant possession sangat sangat penting uh, so even sehari lambat pun sudah kira late delivery okay so time is of the essence even if you uh, deliver one day late it's considered late delivery okay there is uh, implication lah, uh, of late delivery if the vendor fails to deliver vacant possession on time and uh, uh, apa nama, and in the stipulated manner. Uh, apa yang jadi kalau gagal untuk deliver on time dan juga menggunakan dan mengikut cara yang telah ditetapkan uh, dalam clause 
untuk shadow G clause 24 untuk shadow H clause 27 the, the coming one you know, the one after that the manner of um, the manner of delivery is stated on the, in the clause coming after clause yang stated above ah uh, timing tu uh, after timing is deliver uh, after timing is manner okay cara so apa yang jadi is the vendor is liable to pay the purchaser liquidated damages okay compensation just now denda kan liquidated damages uh, ganti rugi bukan denda ganti rugi calculated from day to day at the rate of 10% per annum of the purchase price from the expiry date of the delivery of vacant possession so again what is this the expiry date is the date when the purchaser is supposed to get possession kalau uh, you sign 1 bulan 7 2010 uh, untuk landed you're supposed to get that 2 years after that uh, 1 bulan 10 kan so you're supposed to get that 30th September uh, 2012 2 years 24 months so from the expiry date of calculated from and until from the expiry date of the delivery of vacant possession until the date the purchaser takes vacant possession the actual date bila kunci diserahkan kepada the purchaser until the date the purchaser takes vacant possession in terms of getting the keys to the property of the property meaning here for the landed property we call it building for the strata we call it parcel yeah, so this particular paragraph yeah, uh, shows you the implication uh, of late delivery uh, whereby the vendor is liable kena dia wajib bayar satu ganti rugi uh, 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 what about, uh, damage which, which is known as liquidated damages okay so what is liquidated damages uh, in the context of late delivery is also known as LAD Okay. liquidated and ascertained damages ha, liquidated ni sudah cash lah uh, bayaran lah bayaran ascertained sudah dikira tau ha, bayaran sudah dikira so LAD is a genuine pre-estimate before the situation happens uh, before the late delivery happens you anticipate that the situation might happen so what you do is in the contract, in the sale and purchase agreement, you say, you, you stipulate that sekiranya ini berlaku, you kena bayar so much, so much, so much. And in the schedule G and schedule H, the LAD has been, the cara, the, the, the manner of calculation or the method of calculation has been set. Uh, you tak boleh, you cannot simply make another contract uh, uh, to calculate uh, to to to, apa, to amend the calculation or, or the method of calculation of the LAD. So what is it? It's a genuine pre-estimate of the loss that will be caused to one party in a situation where the contract is broken by the other. So this is the generic, uh, any general definition of LAD. So LAD is not just something that you find in um, apa nama, shadow G, shadow H, uh, which is the statutory purchase agreement, bukan? All contracts pun ada this provision, eh? especially construction contracts lah. Sebab kalau lambat saja, there will be losses kan to be borne eh? by the by the apa nama tu by the owner. Sekali lambat, so you must calculate eh? the ganti rugi, the the damages that must be paid eh? to the party who suffered the loss lah, eh? suffered the loss. So in this case. Uh, dikira kontrak tu dah broken, uh, sudah berlaku breach di situ. Uh, kalau you langgar kontrak, you have to pay damages. So what what's the amount of damages? We we agree from the beginning. Uh, this is the formula. Okay, so LAD is actually a formula that both party are aware, both parties are aware are aware of, and both parties agree from the beginning when they sign the contract. Okay, so Schedule G and H contain provisions on LED that is to cover what happens in the event of, a de of the delay who can claim how to calculate uh, the, ma the method or the formula of calculation what happens if LED is not paid semua itulah okay. so contained by a uh, contain in schedule G and schedule H so this is an example of calculation of LED on late delivery for instance, uh, say for a new strata project, uh, the sale and purchase agreement date on one particular parcel is 1st of July 2016. The purchase price is stated at 100,000 ringgit. 
The statutory date of vacant possession delivery, if you calculate, okay, for the strata is 36 months, kan? Uh, so, 1 over uh, 1st July, now the date is 30th June, okay, one day before, okay. Then 2016, you plus 3 years, 2019. Uh, this is also known as completion date. Now, what happens in actual uh, in reality was the actual delivery of vacant possession was only delivered uh, was only uh, only occurs uh, only occurs thirty first August two zero one eight. So you can see here there's a late delivery. Okay, supposed to you supposed to uh, you you're supposed to get uh, your vacant possession on thirtieth of June twenty nineteen, but you only got. Uh, your um, kunci, your, your vacant possession on 31st of August 2019. So how do you calculate the days of delay from 30th of June okay, to 31st of August of the same year? Okay, So you calculate from this day itself, 30th to the kira sahari. So you have Okay, you have that year, um, uh, that year, kiranya first kan, first of July, first July, first July, first August, so the whole of July, the whole of August, okay, um, 30, 30, but August has, uh, July and August has 31 days, huh? so 31, 31, jadi 62, plus 30th of June, 2016, another day, uh, because you're supposed to get your key on that day, that day will be calculated. Okay, the completion date will be calculated as well. So for the two months just now comprising um, 31 days, so 31 days times two plus one. So you have 63 days. So how you calculate the purchase price, which is 100,000 times the interest, which is fixed at 10% per annum, divided by 365 lah, per annum kan times 63 days, so you get 1,726. So this, this is the amount uh, to be paid by the vendor to the purchaser okay, as LAD, uh, liquidated and assessed damages. Okay, next, we're talking now about tribunal claim. Uh, we're talking about when this happens, kan, the late delivery to, or any other um, apa nama, claim, claimable matters that we will learn next week. Uh, so one of which, one of the claimable matters is late delivery lah. Uh, okay. So when, bila, be, when is the last date that you can file a claim uh, uh, to the um, to the house buyers claims tribunal in Malaysia lah. Uh, it says here the claim at the home buyers claims tribunal for late delivery of vacant possession must be done no later than 12 months from the date of CCC or the expiry date of the defect liability period. Uh, defect liability period is calculated, it runs from the date, uh, beginning from the date of the vacant possession delivery and 20 months after that. Uh, dalam masa 24 bulan, 24 months from the date of the vacant possession delivery whichever earlier yang mana satu awal lebih awal okay so no later tidak lebih tidak not more than 12 months daripada date of delivery or the expiry date of the defect liability period uh, so this is how you calculate i give you an example below say the sale and purchase agreement date is 1st of july 2016 okay 1st of July 2016, statutory date of vacant possession delivery or the completion date is 30th of June 2019. So this is a strata, lah. strata again, 36 months. The CCC date, the actual date of the CCC is 31st of July 2019. So you can see here the CCC date is one month after the completion, completion date. Lah. Okay. But the actual delivery of vacant possession is much later, 31st. Uh, dah lah ni lambat sepatutnya, in uh, reality, if you aim for completion date on the on 30th of June 2019, CCC should be uh, should be issued before 30th of June uh, because a condition for vacant possession is CCC already issued. 
So uh, dalam case ini, in this case, there was a, a, a delay uh, in um, construction which caused the CCC only to be issued on 31st of um, July 2019 and the actual delivery of the composition on 31st um, August 2019. So if we go on, if we calculate the 12 months from the date of CCC, okay, one here, one, 12 months from CCC date is this one, 31st July, kan? so you add 12 months here, you get 31st July 2020. So if you go and calculate the second, uh, apa tu, the second condition, not condition, the second um, uh, what do you call it? qualifier lah. Uh, this is the first qualifier. This is the second qualifier. Qualifier number one is um, is related to CCC. Qualifier number two is related to defect liability period expiry date. Okay, so CCC. Is to, um, uh, when you calculate the 12 months, you get 31st July 2020. Then the expiry date of the uh, defect liability period, which is 24 months uh, from the date of vacant possession delivery. So when was the vacant possession delivered? 31st August 2019. So the, the vacant possession, uh, sorry, the, the defect liability period is valid within 24 months. So you add two years there, 24 months there, from this date, from the actual delivery, eh? actual delivery. So 31 August 2019 plus two years, plus 24 months here, so you get uh, 31st August 2021, two years kan. So which one is earlier? This one is, the number one is earlier, eh? which, which comes in 2020, uh, July, 31st July 2020 is earlier than 31st August 2021. One is earlier, therefore, the claim must be made before 31st July 2020. Uh, so you must claim for the uh, for the LAD just now, okay, uh, before this date, uh, before, 30, uh, before, 12, uh, before 31st July 2021. Otherwise, you may not uh, the, the the sorry the claim may not uh, be heard at the um, tribunal. Now the manner of delivery of vacant possession, the method lah, bagaimana how uh, before can deliver before the vendor can deliver vacant possession. Okay, according to clause twenty four schedule G, uh, which um, rules the manner of delivery of vacant possession, and also clause twenty seven uh, for schedule H. There are five conditions that must be fulfilled. Lima. First one is the vendor's architect has issued a certificate certifying that the construction of the building or parcel has been duly completed. Uh, if we recall what we have learned before, okay, this certificate is related to UBBL. Okay, this actually refers to form F. Uh, uh, issue certificate certifying that the construction has been duly completed. Ini bukan, uh, this is not CCC. Ini cuma certification by the um, by the architect that the building has been completed according to the laws, according to the uh, approved building plan. That was the prerequisite for CCC, can remember? Then the second one is water and electricity supply are ready for connection to the said building or parcel. And ready for connection, meter sudah ada kat luar rumah, meter. Adakah, is, um, does that mean that the electricity and uh, water supply has flowed into the building? No, not, not necessarily. Uh, ready for connection sahaja. So that's the interpretation. You cannot interpret more than that. Uh, you cannot say, oh, Maknanya dah ada, there should be water supply and electricity supply, supply. no. Uh, that means ready for connection, meter dah ada kat luar, kabel dah ada kat luar. It's just a matter of uh, calling, uh, apa nama, uh, 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 registering your account ataupun creating account with MD, with Air Selangor ke whatever syabas ke. Huh? So that's the responsibility of the um, the connection itself is the, the, the responsibility of the owner, of the purchaser. They can go and uh, create their accounts uh, with the providers. Now, 
the third one, CCC has been issued on the building or parcel. So this comes after the certificate certifying the construction. So CCC has been issued. The purchaser has paid all monies payable. Uh, semua duit-duit tadi, okay, all the monies payable as per schedule, uh, sorry, the third schedule, uh, in both schedule G and schedule H, semua the 10%, pro, the all progress payments so has been released by the bank. Lah. Normally, you can cash, kan? you can use finance. Kan? Uh, so the money has been released by the banks, so 10%, 15%, 5%, 5%, 5%, according to the third schedule. Okay, all money is payable in that and also any other payments, uh, any other um, apa nama tu, payments accrued ataupun payable yang perlu dibayar selain daripada third schedule. Contohnya, there could be administrative charges uh, by the developer that they that they have agreed before. So, they have to pay uh, for that one. The fifth one, the purchaser has performed and observed all the terms and covenants on his part under the sale purchase agreement. So, Uh, terms and covenants yang terkandung dalam Shadow G and Shadow H. For instance, uh, uh, obtaining a loan, uh, obtaining, obtaining financing, that is the responsibility of the purchaser. So, if he managed to get, then good luck. He has fulfilled his um, terms and covenants. But if not, then that means that he has not um, performed uh, what has been required of him in the schedule. G or Shadow H. So, tak perlulah diberikan the composition sebab he has not fulfilled his end of the contract. So, these are the five conditions before the vacant possession is delivered. What about the documents? There are two required documents. Huh? Uh, again, this is part of the manner. Uh, ini method jugalah. Selain daripada, besides fulfilling the five conditions, these are the two documents huh, that are required in uh, during the delivery of the vacant possession. The first one is a certificate signed by the vendors, architect certifying that the said building has been duly constructed and completed in according uh, in number one tadi tu. Uh, basically, must the, the, the certificate itself must be delivered, must be given to the purchaser. Mesti ada pada masa itu. And this is also known as form F of Uh, build, uh, by law 25 UBBL. We have learned this before, huh? form F too. Form F comes before the issuance of CCC. Now, the second one is under is actually under the old system, whereby in the old system, the building certification is done by the, sorry, the certification for the new building, huh? that the building is safe for human habitation, kan? for occupation. Kan? Uh, so that was the CFO system, the Certificate of Fitness for Occupation. Uh, so the, uh, as I mentioned in class, see, under the old system, CF, the, the, the Certificate of Fitness for Occupation, is, is, was issued by the local authority. And it will only be issued upon application by the, um, by the, uh, PSP, by the architect lah of the development by the PSP. Uh, PSP yalah, by that time, huh? by the architect in charge. Huh? So there must, uh, in the old days, uh, in the old system, okay, uh, the delivery of vacant possession without CCC, kan, pada masa itu, uh, there must be proof that CFO has already been applied for. And the issuance is not, it's not within the the hands of the of the what do you call it of the architects kan uh, but then again there must be proof that CFO has already been applied for uh, in the old system saja so essentially for 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 current um, vacant possession this form f must be delivered must be given together with the keys and if you go back to your lectures you also find that there's a requirement for the architect to give a copy of the form F to the owner. Okay. Then, um, under section 7 of HDA, Housing Development Act, uh, it states that the developer must inform the controller of the vacant possession delivery to the first purchaser within 21 days. Uh, they must inform in writing, tulis surat, bahawa serah milikan kosong telah disempurnakan. Now, what about this one, the last one, eh? defect liability period. Defect liability period um, runs okay, uh, upon the uh, delivery of vacant possession. That's why this is part of this lecture. 
uh, because once vacant possession telah diberi telah diserahkan uh, once you have delivered vacant possession that's when time starts to the clock starts ticking ah uh, the clock for the warranty of the new building starts ticking ah uh. dia, dia mula berbunyi uh, dia mula apa um, uh, countdown countdown okay from the date of the vacant possession dari mana dia menerima kunci tu this um, defect liability period is provided under clause 26 uh, of the schedule G and uh, also clause 30 of schedule H okay what is it it's a period within 24 months after the delivery of vacant possession in which the purchaser may notify the vendor the vendor in writing about the defect and the vendor shall repair and make good the defect uh, so ada dua two, two things must happen there huh? one the the purchaser must notify in writing dia mesti bagi satu notis bertulis ah huh? must notify in writing um, that there's a defect and i require you the vendor to come and fix to come and make good it must be fix or make good lah uh, memperbetulkan ataupun memulihkan huh? kalau tak ada ada kan that is make good ha? sebab sometimes the 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 defect tu is not because of retak ke apa sometimes sometimes something is missing kan so you minta developer come come in to make good betul kan ha? buat buat benda yang tak ada tu okay so it's 24 months ha? after the delivery of vacant possession okay and what must be done first of all it must come from the purchaser notice in writing a written notice must come from the purchaser uh, purchaser yes to the vendor vendor tu mesti diberitahu barulah ada uh, there's a requirement for action uh, without notice uh, the purchaser cannot say that oh ini rosak ini rosak and then you complain no you must notify in writing yeah, to the vendor and also to do what for what to make good or to repair uh, the uh, defect so what's the definition of defect Defect includes defect, kerosakan, shrinkage. Yang uh, whatever you should have gotten bigger, you get smaller. Shrinkage or other faults in the building or parcel. Apa-apa bentuk uh, faults lah. Apa yang tak betul. Uh, faults in the building or parcel due to, uh, mesti boleh, the, the, the defect must be linked to defective workmanship or materials or the building not constructed according to the approved plans and descriptions ah so that's the catch lah ah the defect if it's a normal wear and tear normal wear wear and tear could be a bit hard ha huh, to claim but ah uh, if you if the purchaser can uh show normally this is normal lah huh, if you go to a new newly completed completed house sometimes you get things like broken tiles ah huh? like uh paints uh, not uh, not sorry the walls not painted right okay maybe um other things lah uh, maybe the, the 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 door the door won't close won't shut properly kan uh, because of apa nama tu salah size ke you know the door jam the door frame and the door itself uh, not being um prepared uh, not being um bukan constructed what do you call that prepared lah kan uh, dia dia ketam you have to uh, shave some uh, apa nama tu some some parts not parts like a few inches not in, millimeters of the door sometimes eh? because it's stuck if you come to my room you learn, you know what i mean sometimes you have to really bang the, you have to really pull the door kan, to make it close eh? because of the fact that sometimes the the measurement to the door frame and the door itself um it's not perfect kan so you must create some kind of space eh, in terms of buatlah ketam shave shave some uh, millimeters off eh, to 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 make the door uh, fit perfectly anyway so that's why why you you um, notify the vendor or the the developer to come in see the this this all uh, sorry see uh, come and see all these defects that i have marked eh, in the complaint form normally there's a standard form lah uh, together with the keys okay normally there's a standard form given by the um the developer a standard one you go and you do a checklist it's like a checklist living is there any complaints um uh, kitchen is there any complaints bathroom one bathroom two and so on and you are uh, and um the the purchaser 
can attach also any photos, any proofs that there are defects huh, in the new uh, unit. For instance, like I said just now, cracked tiles, huh, broken tiles, you know, um, um, poor paint jobs, huh? uh, what else are the normal problem? Poor paint jobs, um, some minor cracks on the wall sometimes like, because plastering is not done well. Kan? Uh, so those kind of things huh? you can mark and then you can uh, complain huh, to the um, vendor. Okay. Um, so, 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 sorry. Uh, the the factors that contributed to that contribute to the defects must be one defective workmanship or materials. Two, the building not constructed according to the approved plans and descriptions. I have to prove that. So the vendor is required to repair or make good the defect at its own cost and expenses. So can, the vendor cannot deduct, cannot um, charge uh, the purchaser. They must make good ataupun repair the defect dengan duit sendiri, dengan belanja sendiri uh, with, uh, at its own cost and expenses. There's a time period within 30 days of receiving the notice. If not repaired within 30 days, the purchaser may, one, deduct the cost from the sum being held by the vendor solicitor as stakeholder. Remember the, one, the uh, third schedule that I showed you just now, 2.5% at the end, at the very end, 5% will be retained by the vendor solicitor, 2.5% will only be released, okay, after six months, kan? then the remainder will be released after, it says there, 18 months uh, of the, um, of the what do you call it of the vacant possession delivery uh, so the the, re, the balance to uh, deduct from the from the balance uh, the five percent balance or file a claim against the vendor from home owners claims tribunal so this is what we we're going to learn in our next lecture uh, uh, one about the home owners claims home it's not home owners it's home buyers claims tribunal okay uh, and also how, okay, what is it, how to file a claim, okay, what kind of claims can be made uh, um, in a home bias claims tribunal. Okay, so that's all um, our lecture. Uh, thank you for your attention. So if you have any questions, feel free to message me. Bye-bye. Happy studying.